Hi, I'm uh, Doretti Fufa from the Hand uh, and uh, Trauma Services, uh, here to cover the suturing and knot tying module. Uh, the next type of stitch that we're going to do is a running subcuticular suture. The normal sutures to use for this layer would be a non-braided uh, monofilament type of a suture, something like a monocryl or a proline suture. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a nylon suture only because it's dyed uh, to make it easier for you to see um, in the, uh, for purposes of demonstration here. The subcuticular uh, suture can be begun in, in multiple ways. I typically begin by burying my stitch. This suture is going to be used after you've already closed your deep subcutaneous layer and there's not very much tension on your wound and it's just to bring your actual skin edges together in perfect approximation. So to start this stitch, um, you start by bringing your needle in from deep to superficial, exiting right in the subcuticular layer of the dermis. I reload my needle right here by pronating my hand so it's ready for use on the other side. And on the other side, you want to enter at the same depth that you exited on the other side. And you go from superficial to deep. Here I'm going to tie my stitch down in order to anchor my running stitch by doing a standard instrument tie. Sometimes in running types of sutures, I like to use an extra knot or two because if this knot fails, really short, because if this knot fails, the whole thing unravels. So now my suture is uh, anchored and I'm going to start running it in the subcuticular layer. It's helpful if you can have somebody hold the um, tail of your stitch uh, out of your way and I'm running my passes in the subcuticular layer. Unfortunately, in this cadaver, it's a little bit difficult to appreciate. It's not a very thick uh, layer in this, older, um, in this older cadaver. But my sutures are entering that dermal layer and exiting it on the same side at the same depth. As I've done previously, I like to reload my new needle right here for, for use so that I don't have to take it off the field and waste steps. When I bring my, my next pass on the far end, I want to be directly across from where I exited. I'm going to evert this skin edge so that I can enter the dermis. I grab my needle here and I reload it for immediate use. And the goal is to close down this dermal layer. Here I can see directly across where my goal is to enter. I enter the tissue in that dermal layer and exit in that dermal layer. I reload immediately and I advance. Every time I'm trying to follow the radius of curvature of my needle to do the least trauma possible to the soft tissues, which requires supination and pronation of your hand. Reload the needle. Everting the skin so that I can see that dermal layer without traumatizing the skin. So I use one forcep, or if I do have to use pressure, it's very light pressure with my forceps. To end this stitch, which will just end right here, there's a couple of ways to end it. One way is to create a knot where we are using the loop of your suture. Again, as I mentioned, bringing 
bringing your knot down in line with your wound edge is going to make this, the skin edges approximate as much as possible. Okay, we've created a knot here now. We're just going to cut the one end of the knot off, keeping the suture tails incredibly short. And then I'm going to try to bury this knot at a slightly deeper tissue depth by coming into the tissues at a deeper level. And we exit it out the skin. We're just going to cut this. It's already, it's already, the, the suture's already finished by having tied that knot down. But what the purpose of this now is simply to bury that knot. So I've passed it deep in the subcutaneous tissues. And the goal is to make that knot disappear. And now we just cut this right at the skin.